All right, welcome back. In this session, we're going to take a look at rules for accentuation of verbs. Now, here you see I have verbs here in parentheses uh, up at the top, and that's because these rules only apply to verbs. Okay, you're going to have a different set of rules for nouns, and, and that's called the rules of persistent accentuation, which we're going to look at here uh, next. Okay, so but but right now these these are only for verbs. Now, how do you know that these words are all verbs? Well, you really don't. Okay, you know because I've told you they are. But as the course goes on, you'll be able to recognize them. A because you'll know them as vocabulary words, and two because you'll be able to recognize the ending. So so don't worry about that right now. Obviously, there's no way you could know that. But but given these are verbs, you know we we can learn at this point how to apply the rules of recessive accentuation, which is what we're going to be doing. Okay, so the rules basically are this. All right, you you go back as far as you can up to three syllables. Okay, remember in in Greek you have three syllables: the ultima syllable, which is the last syllable here. That in this case would be the a. All right, I hate that little bug that does that. Um, the penultimate s uh, syllable, which is the us here. Okay, or I guess you would probably lump the lambda in with it to make it loose. Okay, so that would be your penultimate s syllable, and then the first syllable here, if there is one, uh, the the third one back, if there is one, if it goes back that far, is called the antepenult. Okay, so there's three syllables here. Okay, the ultima, the penultima, the next to last, and the antepenultimate, which is the third from the last. Now the rules is ba are basically this: in Greek uh, for verbs. The accent goes back as far as it can go, up to three syllables. So one, two, three. Okay. The only thing that would hold it back is what? The presence of long vowels. Okay. It can only go back one syllable from the nearest long vowel. Okay. So we have to take a look here and assess the, these vowels here. Um, alpha is a short vowel. Okay. Upsilon is also uh, usually a short vowel as well. So here it can go all the way back to the beginning. So we would accent it right here on the very first syllable or the antepenult to get elusa, elusa. So you see the accent there on the first syllable. Okay, elusa. All right, next word. Uh, pistuo, pistuo. This is the word uh, for believe or to trust. Um, we notice here it too has three syllables. Pist, okay, tu. And then O. Oh, okay, so we have a possibility of it going all the way back to, to, to the first syllable here, the antepenult. But what's going to happen? We try to take it back and we realize, aha, the last syllable is an omega, which is a long vowel. Therefore, we only can go back one vowel from the nearest long vowel. Okay? Or the pistuo. Pistuo. Okay? Now, pistuite is going to be a different form of the same verb. To believe in this case it's going to be you plural believe we'll learn all that uh, in, soon enough but in this case we're going to count vowels again in this case it can go back further okay one two three okay so keep in mind in this case it's going to fall in the same syllable but it can go back three syllables okay so so we're going to end up accenting the same syllable there but again remember it could go back because each epsilon here represents a short vowel. So the et, te, et here is the, um, it, it, each are short vowels. Okay, so it goes back uh, as far as it can go, which is to the, to, to, to the, to the, the uh, antepenult. Okay, all right. Uh, leluca, leluca. All right, again, we look here, short vowel, short vowel. Okay, so therefore we can bring it all the way back to the antepenult here for leluca. All right, lue, lue. Okay, well, with a verb for purposes of accentuation, this, these last diphthongs are considered long. Okay, so we have to bring it back to the antepenult or so the to penult here. Okay, so lue, lue. All right. Okay, eluthane, eluthane. Okay, so in this case, we have again three syllables: the antepenult l, e. Okay. The, the penult, which is luth, okay, and the final syllable, the first syllable, the ultimate, which is the, the, the ain. All right, now remember, eta is a long vowel, okay, so 
our accent can only go back one syllable from the eta. So we will bring it back to here. The ooh, eleuthane. Eleuthane. All right. Okay, blepomen. Blepomen. Well, again, you have three syllables for this particular verb. All right. The first would be the men ending here. The second would be the o, with the po, and the first, the antepenult, would be the ble. All right. So we go back as far as we can. One, two, three, if we're able to. And here we are because this is a short, and this is a short also. So we can go all the way back to the beginning here. Bleppelman. Bleppelman. All right. Okay. Now blepe. Oops. Out here, blepe is again. We, we go back as far as we can. In this case, we only have two syllables to play around with. And this one's going to be long anyway for purposes of accentuation. So here is where we put the accent for blepe, blepe. All right. Same situation in this form. Blepo. The accent's going to have to go here because that's as far back as it can go. Because a, there's only two syllables anyway, and, and b, because you know we have we end with a long vowel so we can only go one syllable back from that okay all right ginomai very common word uh, meaning to become to be all right in this case the ai ending here is going to be short for purposes of accentuation okay this is one of these the short diphthongs um, no gis yeah. so you got three syllables here one two three back this is where we'd accentuate it. Okay. All right. So again, let's scroll down here and look at a few more. All right. Ginosko, the verb meaning to know, or in this case, I know. Uh, here we have three syllables. See, gi, nos, and ko. Okay. But in this case, we're only going to be able to bring back the accent one syllable because the the Ultima is a long vowel, so the accent would have to go one syllable back on the uh, the penult. Okay, Eganathan. Okay, so here you have four syllables to play around with. And remember, I told you that when you started, this is kind of incidental, but when you start a verb with a, a vowel, you have to have a breathing mark of one kind or another. In this case, we have a smooth breathing mark, so it's. Eganathan, not Haganathan. But that aside, we have actually four syllables to play around with. So again, the accent could not go all the way back to the very beginning here. We only have the possibility of it going back up to three syllables. Okay, so it could be here, it could be here in this syllable, okay, and it could be here. All right, but where is it? Well, because we've ended the word in a long syllable, okay, because there's a long vowel, the eight is always long. The accent's going to have to go here on the second ADA. Okay. All right. Ho hope this is a uh, this is a uh, making sense here. And again, don't panic if this seems a little bit tricky at first. It's it's not a big deal, and you will pick it up within a week or two. Okay, if not sooner. But but it's it's worth spending a little bit of time going over it. Okay. So here's another word, apostelomen. Okay, apostelomen, this is the word uh, for send. In this case, it's the first person uh, plural. You don't know that yet. Um, but here we have many syllables. One, two, three, four, five syllables. So again, the, it's only the last three syllables that are really in play when accentuation is concerned. And again, notice the smooth breathing mark here to begin the word. It's apostelomen, not hapostelomen. But be that as it may, each of these two final syllables are short, and therefore we can bring it back all the way to the antepenult, apostelomen. All right. On the other hand, this form of the word apostello, okay, we end in a long vowel, and therefore that's only going to let us go back to the penult there, apostello, apostello. Okay. So let's jump up here again and take a look at a few more. This is hexo, hexo, notice here, it starts on a vowel. In this case, you have a, a rough breathing mark. Hexo, not exo. All right, and this is the, the Kasai uh, letter we learned in the alphabet. Okay, so here, 
it's pretty obvious that the accentuation is going to go on the hex right here because you have to go one syllable back from the nearest long vowel, which is this one. Okay, so I'll see if I can put the accent there. I always get confused with. Ah. Ah. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So you see here, this has a rough breathing mark and an accent on that syllable. Okay. You're going to have the same issue here. Hexomen. See again the rough breathing mark. Hexomen. Okay. So you jump back as far as you can go. In this case, short. Short. Aha. I can go all the way back to the first syllable here. All right. Let's do it. Hexomen. See the accent there now, along with the rough breathing mark. Okay. Now, echo, echo. Okay, actually the same verb as hexo, but but in a different tense. This is the verb to have. This word literally means I have. So we're going to be going back again and accentuating this syllable here because that's the one that was called for by the rules of recessive accentuation. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Okay. Ecate. Okay, same deal here. One, two, short, short. So we can go all the way back here. Oops. <laughs> all right. There we go. I always forget which is which on that. There's four possibilities there. Okay, so again, Echoman, same deal. Short, short, go all the way back. So there we have it. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, Caruso, Caruso, this is a word for announce, for announce. Okay. Let's take a look here. You end in a long vowel, so that tells you right away the farthest back you can go is the penalt syllable here. So, there we go. Caruso. Okay. Carusomen, Carusomen, same deal here, right? Because you got short short so I can go all the way back here now it's it happens in this particular form to be the antipenalt that's where I accent okay all right so balaman balaman this is the word for cast or throw um, one two both short so I can go all the way back to the alpha here oops there we are okay a blathe, a blathe. Okay, uh, how do you handle this one? Well, here you've got three vowels again. We could accent all the way back to the epsilon, except what? We've got a problem here because it ends in a long vowel, so we can only go back one from the long vowel to the second eta. So it's a blathe, a blathe. All right, a grapsuman, a grapsuman. Okay, so this happens to end in two short vowels, short. And this alpha is short also, so we can go all the way back to the antipenalt there. Okay. And let's scroll all the way down here and get, yeah, we go. Okay, so, all right, grapsite, grapsite. So one, two, both short, so uh -huh, I can go all the way back to the alpha. Okay. Epison, epison. Okay, so the omicron here is short. Okay, epsilon is short. Okay, you can go all the way back here. And finally, I got it right there. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, okay. Apongalo. Apongalo. This is the word for announce or to preach, proclaim. Um, you got a long vowel here, so it only is allowed to go back to the epsilon there. Okay. And finally, apongaloman. Apongeloman, okay, so again, short vowel, epsilon, short vowel, omicron, there's where we accent, okay? 
Well, very good. Let's let's take a break and we'll come back and rules of uh, noun accentuation real quickly. Okay, we're back and we're going to take a brief look at the rules of accentuation for nouns. You see up here, I have the word rules uh, in scare quotes, and that's because we're not really giving rules for these, especially the, the basic idea for nouns is that the accentuation is persistent, which means that you establish where the word is accentuated from the basic dictionary form, in this case the word hora, or horas in the genitive, which is the word for our. You see here that it's accentuated, uh, forget the breathing mark for a second, it's accentuated on the first syllable, the omega, hora. Okay, so generally speaking, the rules of accentuation call for that accent being preserved all throughout the forms. Okay, the nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, the nominative. Now, notice with genitive plural, this is an exception. You'll typically find in, in first declension nouns, instead, the circumflex accent over the, the own there at the end. Okay, that's just a common feature that you see. You'll get very used to it in time because it's a very common form that appears a lot. But you'll see a circumflex there. That's the one place where the persistent accent isn't um, really persistent. But it does persist through the dative and the accusative. All right. And then we'll see the same thing with phone, the word for voice or sound. Notice it persists there. See the accent over the last syllable here and the dative as well. The accusative, okay, the, um, the plurals as well, same place. Now notice also that when you accent the last syllable, typically, um, very often you'll see a circumflex in the genitive and dative, both singular and plural, and indeed you see that here, okay? That's again another thing that you'll that you'll notice, all right. But so just keep in mind it's it's fairly regular. The, the way you know how this is accented though is not because of any rule inherent in the uh, language itself that tells you this. You just have to memorize the vocab word. You remember phone a is accent in the last syllable, okay. And therefore phone a phone a sad accentuation pattern is basically preserved throughout the uh, forms. Okay, doxa same idea. All right, another feminine mixed declension. This is the mixed uh, alpha eta stem. Doxa, doxes. Um, see that in every case here, the omicron is accentuated, except when you get to the genitive plural, and then you have that pattern with the uh, circumflexed over the omega. All right. Now, second declension nouns are similar. We, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. I don't think we'll get these for a couple more chapters, but we might as well at least now look at the accentuation pattern because we'll we'll get it soon enough. Here you see, in this case, this particular word has an accent on the uh, penultimate syllable, this omicron, logos. That's the word, as you may know, for word. Okay, logos, logu, notice the accent preserves. Okay, it keeps that same place all throughout, except as you might expect in the genitive plural. Okay. Same deal again, basically with ergon. This is a neuter second declension. That's the word for work, ergon, ergu. Notice that the accent, again, stays on the first syllable all throughout the forms. Okay, now, for some reason, it, with, with second declension, neuters, sometimes you don't get the circumflex over the omega. Don't ask me why, you just don't. Okay, so, but, but again, don't worry terribly much about these rules, okay? just. Learn the basic idea that the accent is persistent and that the only real way to know how a word's going to be accented is to know the form itself, the word itself, with the vocab. Okay, now, with nouns, I don't really hold you responsible for accents. Okay, it's not that big a deal um, if, for instance, you put the accent phone A, like over the omega, as opposed to the eta. Okay, I'm not going to make a big issue of that. Um, I make mistakes with that myself, so I certainly can't expect you to get them all right either. That's not a tremendously important part. The basic idea is now, at this point, just so you know how more or less the accent system works for nouns. Okay, it's a little bit different than for verbs. Okay, well with that, we will stop, and then I will continue now uh, next week when we get into lesson three. Okay, see ya. All right, welcome back. In this session, we're going to take a look at rules for accentuation of verbs. Now, here you see I have verbs here in parentheses uh, up at the top, and that's because 
these rules only apply to verbs, okay? You're going to have a different set of rules for nouns, and, and that's called the rules of persistent accentuation, which we're going to look at here uh, next. Okay, so, but, but right now, these, these are only for verbs. Now, how do you know that these words are all verbs? Well, you really don't, okay? You know because I've told you they are. But as the course goes on, you'll be able to recognize them, A, because you'll know them as vocabulary words, and two, because you'll be able to recognize the ending. So, so don't worry about that right now, obviously. There's no way you could know that. But, but given these are verbs, you know, we, we can learn at this point how to apply the rules of recessive accentuation, which is what we're going to be doing. Okay, so the rules basically are this. All right, you, you go back as far as you can up to three syllables. Okay, remember in, in Greek you have three syllables. The ultima syllable, which is the last syllable here, that in this case would be the A. All right, I hate that little bug that does that. Um, the penultimate uh, syllable, which is the oos here. Okay, or I guess you would probably lump the lambda in with it to make it loose. Okay, so that would be your penultimate syllable. And then the first syllable here, if there is one, uh, the, the third one back, if there is one, if it goes back that far, is called the antepenult. Okay, so there's three syllables here. Okay, the ultima, the penultima, the next to last, and the antepenultimate, which is the third from the last. Now, the rules is ba are basically this. In Greek, uh, for verbs, the accent goes back as far as it can go up to three syllables. So one, two, three. Okay, the only thing that would hold it back is what? The presence of long vowels. Okay, it can only go back one syllable from the nearest long vowel. Okay, so we have to take a look here and assess the, these vowels here. Um, alpha is a short vowel, okay? Upsilon is also uh, usually a short vowel as well, so here it can go all the way back to the beginning. So we would accent it right here on the very first syllable or the antepenult to get elusa, elusa. So you see the accent there on the first syllable, okay, elusa. All right, next word, uh, pistuo, pistuo, this is the word uh, for believe or to trust. Um, we notice here it too has three syllables, pis, okay, tu, and then O. Okay, so we have a possibility of it going all the way back to, to, to the first syllable here, the antepenult, but what's going to happen? We try to take it back and we realize, aha, the last syllable is an omega, which is a long vowel. Therefore, we only can go back one vowel from the nearest long vowel, okay? Or the pistuo, pistuo, okay? Now, pistuite is going to be a different form of the same verb, to believe. In this case, it's going to be you plural believe. We'll learn all that uh, in, soon enough. But in this case, we're going to count vowels again. In this case, it can go back further. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so keep in mind, in this case, it's going to fall in the same syllable, but it can go back three syllables. Okay, so, so we're going to end up accenting the same syllable there. But again, remember, it could go back because each epsilon here represents a short vowel. So the et, te, et here is the, um, it, it, each are short vowels. Okay, so it goes back uh, as far as it can go, which is to the, to, to, to the, to the, the uh, antepenult. Okay, all right. Uh, leluca, leluca. All right, again, we look here, short vowel, short vowel. Okay, so therefore we can bring it all the way back to the antepenult here for leluca. All right, lue, lue, okay, well, with a verb for purposes of accentuation, this, these last diphthongs are considered long, okay, so we have to bring it back to the antepenult, or to the to penult here, okay, so lue, lue, all right, okay, eluthane, eluthane, okay, so in this case, we have again three syllables, the antepenult l, e, okay, the, the penult, which is luth, okay, and the final syllable, the first syllable, the ultimate, which is the, the, the ain. All right, now remember, eta is a long vowel, okay, so our accent can only go back one syllable from the eta, so we will bring it back to here. The ooh, eluthane, eluthane, all right. 
Okay, blepomen, blepomen. Well, again, you have three syllables for this particular verb. All right, the first would be the men ending here, the second would be the o, with the po, and the first, the antepenult, would be the ble. All right, so we go back as far as we can, one, two, three, if we're able to, and here we are because this is a short, and this is a short also, so we can go all the way back to the beginning here. Blepelman, blepelman. All right. Okay. Now blepe. Oops. Let's straighten this out here. Blepe is. Again, we we go back as far as we can. In this case, we only have two syllables to play around with, and this one's going to be long anyway for purposes of accentuation. So here is where we put the accent for blepe, blepe. All right. Same situation in this form, blepo. The accent's going to have to go here because that's as far back as it can go. Because a, there's only two syllables anyway, and, and b, because you know we have we end with a long vowel, so we can only go one syllable back from that. Okay. All right, ginomai, very common word uh, meaning to become, to be. All right. In this case, the ai ending here is going to be short for purposes of accentuation. Okay, this is one of the, the short diphthongs.